Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening to you and welcome to the latest in our series of Doha debates coming to you from the Gulf state of Qatar and sponsored by the Qatar Foundation. One of the main reasons given by NATO leaders for intervening in the Libyan conflict was that the Arab states asked them to. But what business has the West got intervening once again in a conflict in an Arab Muslim state? At a time when Arabs themselves are rising up against their leaders, shouldn't they take sole responsibility for the outcome of their actions? And isn't it more important than ever that the West stays out of whatever new Arab world emerges from all the turmoil and violence? Those questions underlie our motion tonight. This House believes that Arabs, not NATO, should be dealing with Libya. And as you'd expect, our panelists tonight disagree fundamentally on the issue. Speaking for the motion, Mohammed Ali Abdallah, Deputy Secretary General of the National Front for the Salvation of Libya, one of the country's most prominent opposition groups in exile. And with him, Paul Salem, founder of the Lebanese Center for Policy Studies and now director of the Carnegie Middle East Center in Beirut. Against the motion, Fadel Lahman, president of the American Libyan Council, based in Washington, D.C. He's a writer, journalist, and advisor on the Middle East and North Africa. Also opposing the motion, Dr. Omar Ashour, who lectures in the politics of the modern Arab world. Plenty to keep him busy there at the University of Exeter in the United Kingdom. Ladies and gentlemen, our panel. So now let me first ask Mohammed Ali Abdallah to speak for the motion. Thank you. Uh, the objective of any intervention, whether it's from the Arab world or any other party, uh, first of all, is to save lives and to protect civilians. Uh, and this is what Libyan people called upon. Uh, and this is why the Libyans themselves ask for an intervention uh, into protecting civilians uh, in Libya. Uh, the second objective is to enable the Libyans to actually be able to voice themselves in a peaceful manner, uh, to demand their rights, the rights that have been taken from them for 42 years under the dictatorship of Gaddafi, uh, and this is something that, at an international level, uh, is recognized uh, as a right uh, for these people. Now, uh, why the Arabs should be the ones intervening and not NATO? Uh, I think the close proximity of the Arab countries, first of all, is a practical reason. Uh, and more importantly, the cultural uh, similarities and understanding, whether it's the language, religion, uh, and, and beyond that, into the social makeup, of the region, I think this gives the Arab countries an advantage uh, into being able to intervene. However, the most fundamental reason, in my opinion, is that this was an opportunity for the Arab and the whole entire region, the entire Middle East region, to shift a very uh, important paradigm. And that paradigm is that the Middle East is a hotbed for problems. And the Middle East is typically a place where we get oil from for the rest of the world, but also there's a lot of conflict and wars. Having spent more than 25 years in the West, this is the immediate perception any time you mention the Middle East. This was an opportunity to shift that paradigm. Having Arab leaders step in and Arab people driving these leaders into step in and fix our own problems here in this region, I think this would have been a regional revolution in addition to the local revolutions that we've seen for the past few months, which is starting to shift the paradigm locally. This was an opportunity to shift the paradigm at a regional level, and I think the boat was missed. Okay, Mohammed Ali Abdallah, thank you very much indeed. I'm slightly curious as to how you think a group of countries as divided and uh, warring amongst each other as the Arab states could actually organize an intervention, a coherent intervention in Libya. How do you think they might manage that? I think the same They've way... They've never shown the slightest inclination to do it in the past, have yeah, they? And this is exactly the point, Tim, is that we are in a new era. We are in an era of where the people are driving the decisions and not the regimes. And this is what Bouazizi has will be always remembered in the history. Yeah, but you're saying you want wall. Arab regimes to intervene in Libya. Yes, but you want Arab regimes driven by their people and not the Arab regimes who are driving for their own well, interests. Well, the they'd keep still the be the same regimes that sat down with Colonel Gaddafi at a time when he was being accused of torturing and mistreating his own people. You think the Libyans would like that now? I think we are lucky in Libya to have to our east and to our west new regimes that are not people who have committed crimes and that are not people who have driven the support for Gaddafi, and these regimes were brought to power by their own people, and I think this was a precedent that was put in place, and unfortunately, Libya was not able to benefit from that in a practical sense up until now, but I think the opportunity for that is still there. You've seen the signs from uh, Arabs and Libyans on the streets there. They're not in Arabic, they're in English, aren't they? They are in English, but this, they, is, they this want, is the new world. They want help from the West. 
This, uh, I don't think holding signs in English doesn't necessarily mean that you want help from the West. Well, it's, I not, think, it's not asking for help from here, is it? I think it, that the people were driven to that. That was not a, an optimal conclusion. I think people were forced to do that. I think Libyans, we welcome the UN intervention and the NATO intervention eventually, but this debate and this discussion was, should the Arabs, should have the Arabs been the ones to intervene as a position from so a the Arabs standpoint. who are more used to fighting against each other than with each other are suddenly going to bury their differences and turn up offering aid, assistance, help with democracy, all kinds of things that they haven't even got in their own countries, they're going to offer them to Libya. Then, I think there are some countries who are ready to do that and this is the Which paradigm ones? shift. Which ones? Who's ready? I think Egypt. I think we are sitting in a it's country... Ready? It's still under, under emergency <laughs> rule. All right, Mohammed Ali Abdallah, thank you very much indeed. Thank you. And now please, Fadal Laman, would you speak against the motion? Thank you very much. Uh, I would like to say that uh, there is the issue of should somebody deal with something and the issue of can somebody deal with something. And I think, I think uh, uh, hypotheticals are very easy to, to uh, uh, discuss, uh, but the reality is when we have to deal with, the, with a decision and the ability to do something, I think uh, we, we have to question the possibility of the ability of the Arab countries to be able to uh, deliver. Uh, and I think uh, when I look at the uh, intervention here, I look at it, it's beyond an Arab world. It's the issue of, comes from the United Nations. It's the, it's the concept of humanitarian intervention that was, um, that was adopted by the United Nations after miserable and disastrous experiences for a number of years. And I think that concept is called the responsibility to protect. It's, it's that is a responsibility only of the Arab world. It's a responsibility of all the world to protect each other as humans. And I think finally the United Nations came to realize that there is a responsibility uh, by themselves to do that. And I think the question was, who can do it? Who can intervene? Who can protect the civilians? Uh, the United Nations uh, cannot do it itself. The Arab League, if we look at the Arab League, the Arabs can do it, then let's talk about the Arab League. Who's going to do it? The Arab League is, is, is a group of countries that are designed, the, the organization is designed to protect the regimes, to help cooperate and coordinate within the regimes, mostly in foreign policy. It has no mandate to interfere within their own countries, within the interior uh, issues of, the, of these countries. And even if it can, it has no capabilities. It cannot. It has no teeth. So it cannot get to the point that it will enforce any intervention whatsoever against its own members. Okay, Fadal Laman, thank you very much indeed. Um, half the time the Arab world is complaining that the West is acting like the policeman of the world and now you're saying, go do it again. Pick up the pieces, do the dirty work, things have gone wrong, the Libyan revolution didn't go as expected, so the West should jump in. You can't have it both ways. One moment you're complaining they're policemen, the next moment you want them to come in. I think most of the people, there is a perception about involvement. You involve in a situation in a country like Iraq, which is people have issues with, and you involve for the right reason. I think the West had the uh, opportunity and they were involved in... in, in well, either you want in, a new Arab world or you don't. New relationships with the West of the world or you don't. If you bring, it, bring in NATO, it's going to perpetuate the old relationships, isn't it? No, it doesn't. Bring, bring it in doesn't. the global it policeman doesn't. again. This is exactly what Arabs are saying all around the region they don't want. They are not saying that right now. They not said it when, they had, Libya. when there was an intervention. No, they are not. I think the majority of the Arab world, with the intervention, as the majority of the Arab world, the Muslim world, they were in, for the inter intervention of NATO and the Western countries in Kosovo and, and Bosnia. The problem with the Western countries, they were not able to market their successes and their good interventions to the Muslim and the Arab world. And, and when all failed. the civilian casualties mount up as they are, and the hatred then is directed again against the West, What's, I, what's I, in it for the West I, to do this? I think, I think NATO and the Western country are very smart right now to try to avoid all civilian casualties and they know... But that the civilian the casualties are there. There, there, there are possibilities. There have been dozens, I, there have been I, dozens of them. I and, don't know. and the intervention I mean, is not pleasing that's anything. The, that's what the Libyan regime said, there are civilian casualties. I but the, but the intervention is not pleasing the rebels either. They're saying NATO isn't they doing enough. They want more. They, they want, want more. more. They want more. Oh, yeah. But so, they have to understand that there are limitations. So NATO should jump just because uh, some group says we need you? No. I think the rebels, they have to understand that there is a limitation for the uh, Western intervention too. All right, Fadal Laman, thank, thank you very you. much indeed.
Paul Salam, could I ask you please to speak for the motion? Yeah, I definitely think that the Arab countries and the countries of the region should be taking the lead in this initiative. They did take the lead in calling for the initiative. It was the Arab League, the GCC, and the Organization of Islamic Conference after the Libyan uh, rebels asked for a uh, no-fly zone that the Arab League and these regional uh, leaders made the public statements that then were taken to the Security Council. Uh, I think the Arab countries and possibly Turkey as well should have uh, taking, taken a leading role with the international community at the end. It is a Security Council resolution as it should be. Uh, and so it should have had significant Arab participation, probably also Turkish participation, as well as international participation, whether it's NATO or other countries. It, it, it need not have been an either or thing. This has been done before. It was done in the liberation of Kuwait. It was successful. The Arab countries uh, sent troops. There was, uh, there was coordination. It was successful. Uh, it is our responsibility in the region, uh, it's our responsibility first to react to atrocities and things that happen in the region, not just to call for others to come and help us out with our problems. Uh, in addition, there's been billions and billions of dollars spent on uh, military hardware in the region. Uh, what better uh, cause to put it to use than to defend innocent civilians against uh, an atrocity that the, the Arab League and the states themselves have said it is an atrocity, particularly in this moment when the Arab peoples have stood up for human rights, for freedom, for freedom from repression, for, for, for democracy, particularly in Egypt and Tunisia, the two countries uh, bordering Libya, and the Libyan people uh, responded or reacted, and to not have even the, the states bordering Libya uh, really put their, their, their money where their mouth is, as, as it were, I think is a great moral failing. We want to be taken seriously as, as a region. We want to be taken seriously when we complain about Israel doing this or that or the other thing. And yet, we do not react as a group of nations, either when Saddam did what he did in Iraq, or what happened in Darfur, or what's happening now uh, in Libya. I think there is still time for Arab countries to participate more fully. Uh, Qatar did send something, more than others did. Much more can be done, and there's still, unfortunately, a long road in Libya to, uh, to follow up with. Okay, Paul Salam, thank you very much indeed. Um, chaos, flux, uh, political turmoil, violence that characterizes the Arab world at the moment. Haven't they got their mind on other things? How do you think they're going to arrange greater assistance to Libya under those conditions? Well, there certainly is a challenge, and we know that the... It's, it's more than a challenge. It's an impossibility, isn't it? It is not an or impossibility. No, and I, they're either I, clinging to power or they're a revolution on the streets. If you it? take, for example, the Egyptian case, there's no doubt that the military, the armed, uh, you know, armed forces of Egypt have a lot on their hands. But they could have offered still at got least, a state of emergency. They, they could have offered at least symbolic participation. wasn't required to offer much more than that. To give much, much more. Symbolic participation. It is We've significant. Got participation. You had symbolic participation in Kuwait, uh, uh, and you know some symbolic, some significant. It makes a difference. But for the Arab but you're states, you're talking about a real. Con you want the Arab states to deal with Libya, not no. I'm not, saying, provide, not provide a symbolic contribution. Well, what I'm saying is the following, that the Arab countries are part of the world. The Arab people have declared we are not exceptional. We're not different than anybody else. We want dignity, we want democracy, we want pluralism, we want human rights. So when the Arab states or Turkey or other states from the region participate in protecting a people in the region, they should do so along with the NATO, international and, community. And you say NATO should get out, leave, leave no, them to it. Leave them to squabble and argue about what they're going to do while Gaddafi's no, no, men no, go no, from no. house I'm to house in Benghazi putting bullets in the back zenga, of people's zenga, heads. Benghazi, yeah, no, I'm saying we should do it together. Uh, but for the oh, Arab so you, countries... You want it both the, ways? You want it both ways? No, I want it as a participatory thing. You want NATO and the Arabs? Yes, I do want NATO and the Arabs because we're all responsible for protecting civilians. Libyans are human beings of, of the you're world. You're on the side and they have that rights. just wants Arabs to do it, by the way. Yeah, the well, I want them to take the lead, back. and they did not and take And you think you're cap they're capable of doing that? Well, they could take much more of a lead than they did. They've certainly failed on this occasion, and Turkey failed as well. All right, Paul Salem, thank you very much indeed. Uh, now, could I ask Omar Ashur to speak against the motion, please? Thank you. Uh, I think that when it comes to Arab dealing with the crisis in Libya, there is no political will, there is no capacity, and certainly there are no credentials in that sense. Political will, is there a will among the regimes that control the Arab world and not necessarily represent their people? Is there that will to intervene heavily uh, in Libya the simple answer is no. We take Egypt as an example, geography, history, identity. Uh, 1.2 million Egyptians work in, in Libya, and at the same time, there is no will whatsoever among the military council to heavily engage in Libya at the NATO's level. 
we also, if we come to the question of capacity, uh, Qatar has a, is an exception, obviously, has a notable and honorable stance when it comes to Libya. Does it have the same military hardware as the NATO's? The question, the, also the answer is uh, no. Uh, we have another problem. The, we, we still have a crisis of democracy and human rights in the Arab world, uh, despite the revolutions. The revolutionaries are not in power in Egypt. There is a military council that is in power that came as a result of the revolution. Similar situation in Tunisia. So we're still getting there, but not uh, fully democratic uh, um, in Egypt and in Tunisia. In the others, uh, or most of the uh, other countries, we have uh, mostly governments that don't represent uh, the people, uh, intransparent in the decision making, uh, inglorious human rights records. And when it comes to the record of humanitarian intervention, uh, quite problematic. We had Hama before in 1982 in Syria, not much apathy among the uh, Arab regimes. Uh, we had a Darfurian crisis currently ongoing, apathy as well. We had an Algerian crisis where more than uh, 150,000 people were killed, also apathy. Uh, we also uh, got others, Iraq uh, uh, is, a, is a situation, Could Gaza as well. Close, so let's focus on the objective, the, if the ultimate objective is to build a stable, democratic Libya. Uh, I think right now the Arab regimes uh, don't have that credentials. If you, don't, if you deny your people democracy and human rights, you cannot teach it or grant it to others. Thank you. Omar Ashur, thank you very much indeed. Um, it's not working, is it? NATO intervention is not working. It's not bringing results. It's bringing stalemate and it's prolonging a war. Is that really what you want? Prolonging casualties day after day? The intervention started 19th of March. Today is the 18th of April. Do you know how many hundreds of sorties NATO planes have flown? If the alternative, yes, I know, 5,200 5, 5, so at, far. At least, yeah. yeah. Uh, but if the alternative Not much to is, show for it, is there? If the alternative is Arab air forces, uh, you will definitely see a higher number of casualties and the very wrong end result. Wrong end result? I mean, look at previous interventions. Look at Afghanistan. Look at Iraq. Is that what you want for your country, Libya? You have the... Okay, because it never goes right, okay, does it? No, this no, is it why does. you don't it intervene. Where, where has it gone right? Let me give you a comparison. Democracies have a mixed record when it comes to interventions. They have Iraq and Afghanistan, they have Kosovo, Bosnia, and they have others. And uh, They have Germany and Japan. Authoritarian regimes, when they intervene, the and record none, is an absolute of them disgrace. Ideal results, did Soviet they? unions, when they interfered in East Europe, what was the result? Corruption, repression, and others. So they don't produce authoritarian regimes. Uh, have an absolute disgraceful record when it comes to interventions, and that's the real problem. We're talking about the Arab people are very much willing to help the Libyans. Does the government represent that the governments represent their will? So let them do it. They, vo they voted for this. Why not? Let them do it. Who, who the, voted the for this? Arabs. They wanted it. They wanted the intervention. Uh, this, is, this, is, this came under pressure. Uh, I don't think there, there was a willing to remove the status quo in Libya, especially among the neighboring countries like Algeria. The question or is whether there should have been. The question is whether Arabs should be dealing with Libya. I don't think this is even, uh, 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 this can even happen in terms of capacity and in terms of will. Omar Ashur, thank you very much indeed. Thank you. All right, uh, we'll now take your questions on the motion this House believes Arabs, not NATO, should be dealing with Libya. Gentleman in the blue shirt, you have a question. We've got a microphone to you. If you just say where you're from, please. Uh, my name is Nabil, I'm from Egypt, and I have a question for the opposition side, uh, specific to Mr. Ashur, but in general to the opposition side. Uh, wouldn't you think it's naive to assume that the Western nations and members of the NATO have the purest of intentions of freedom of expression and democracy to spread in the Middle East when they were the very nations supporting and empowering the regimes such as in Egypt and Tunisia? Everybody knows that Hosni Mubarak was on the CIA payroll. So they just had a change of heart all of a sudden, and now they want to spread revolutions and democracy. That's number one. Okay, no, let's just stay with one question because there are a lot of people. Okay. Sure. And uh, I don't know that everybody knows that he was on the CIA <laughs> payroll, but there you are. Okay, uh, Omar Ashur, do you want to answer that? <laughs> sure, no, absolutely. Uh, states in general are not charity foundations. They have their own interests. 
uh, there is more and more realization among successive administrations since 9-11 that it is in the long term and the midterm, it is in their strategic interest to build democracies in the Middle East for a longer stable relationships. And what's happening in Libya, nobody wants to be dragged again into a civil war because of a repressive authoritarian regime in Libya or elsewhere. The question was about Western intentions. This is the intentions. Uh, the intentions, ultimately, uh, we have a mixed record of Western you intervention. The, you just said the intentions were to spread democracy, and that was growing since 9-11. How is that so if they were, in fact, paying these leaders, such as Hosni Mubarak and his likes, to stay in power and to control the people? Doesn't that seem contradictory to you? The interests uh, with Mubarak was for, to keep him there. The interests right now um, in Libya is to remove al-Qaddafi. We have people so it's dying just a in the of interest, It's not about democracy. And, sorry. So it's just a matter of interest of the Western nations. It's, it's not it, about it, democracy. No, no. It's it's mostly interest. It's, you can name them and shame them, and you can use democracy as a pressure tool. But it is mainly about interests. So I'm saying that. I'm not saying it's a moralistic stance. Thank you very much. You just right admitted now, that. Right now, the interests in Libya is to have a democratic Libya after a while. And I think trying to save the people of Misrata and uh, Tripoli and Benghazi uh, is a humanitarian mission. And after that mission, there will be a process of democratic building similar to what happens in Kosovo. At least this will what we will be pushing uh, for and what we should all be pushing for. Okay, Omar, sure. You've had, a, you've had a long time on this. I'm going to bring Paul Salomon. Okay. Yeah, I, I mean, I agree, I think, with the questioner that you cannot trust any government. It's not a matter of trust. They're all out for their own interest, including Egypt, Tunisia, and anybody else that might intervene. And you correctly point out that Western countries also have a huge interest in Libya and in other places, security and oil and other things. And the invasion of Iraq was largely about oil uh, and other invasions as well are about geo strategy and other interests. So I think what, what we're talking about here is that given that it's not a matter of trusting uh, so much as the responsibility of states in the region and internationally who have committed to the principle of humanitarian intervention. The Arab states took the lead in saying this is a case where humanitarian intervention is required. It is correct. It was a case where the intervention was required. The Arab states should have put their money where their mouth was, taken the lead, and brought the international community with them. And there should be Arab soldiers and or Arab whatever, I'm not a military expert, participating in protecting the Libyan people. Uh, and they should not be standing back and, uh, and criticizing others. You really see a time when that can happen? I think it happened in Kuwait. It could have happened. It still could happen in the coming with, weeks. With the Western decisions are made in Kuwait, no, with a lot of Western pressure. Okay, I'm going to take a question from the gentleman in the front row. If we can get a microphone to you, it's just behind you. If you can tell us where you're from, Hanya please. Omar, Egyptian. How can we change the role of the uh, the Arab League? That's that's what what I'm asking about. Mohammed Ali yeah. Abdullah, do you want to uh, First of all, I think we need to keep the, the, the discussion in context here. Is it's not a matter of whether there should be intervention or not. Okay, it's the definition of uh, who, who should have taken the lead in the, in the position. And to answer your question is, uh, I don't. I agree with you. I don't think Arab League is the proper mechanism to actually drive this intervention uh, into Libya. But I think it was the right mechanism to take the position. And in the Arab League meeting, if it was not for the pressure within the Arab states, led by the GCC, thanks to Qatar, UAE, and, and other countries that drove this message, the Arab League position would have never happened. So what, so is, what is the mechanism for the, driving the proper this mechanism? Has to be individual countries, and it's the intervention is a military intervention. There is no military coordination at an Arab level, I think Egypt was the, should have been the leader to take that position. 1.3 million military personnel, 468,000 of them active with the Egyptian military power that they have. They could have intervened and taken a leadership role. That does not mean, as my colleague Paul said, it doesn't mean that the rest of the world has no role. Everybody okay, has right. a role, Fadal and the Arab Do you want to come should have led that. Two things I would like to mention. First, I'd like to mention to the gentleman there that the word interest is not a dirty word. Everybody has an interest. He has an interest, too, in other things, and I think he, he, uh, he participates and, and look at things from his own interest. Interest is not a bad word. So when we say Western interests, there are Arab interests, there are individual interests. So we have to keep the word interest is well, not a bad word. We're talking more about responsibilities here. We're talking we? about responsibility. Everybody has an interest. With interest, there is a moral obligation. There is a preferred view of the world, like democracy is better than dictatorship. D d democratic countries, they don't fight and each other. And taking responsibility for your own revolution is better that, than that's, calling somebody that's, else. That's in. true. But let me go to the, uh, the, the, the Arab League. The Arab countries are not, they are not qualified yet, and they are not ready yet. 
to assume this kind of responsibility I think because they cannot. These arguments uh, but, uh, let me, let me yeah. mention something. We mentioned I think you've got some Paul, resistance, actually. I can see a few shaking heads in yeah, the audience. Paul, Paul, yeah. mentioned, Paul mentioned Kuwait. Yeah. Kuwait is an invasion of one country to the other. We are talking here about intervening within a country itself. But the Arab that League already, already said they that. Should. They already called for the intervention. They should. Then they, they are did not, nothing. The Arab League and Arab countries if they are not qualified do anything, yet. They shouldn't have yeah. said anything. And they are, not, they are not ready for this. I'm going to take a view from the audience. There was a lady in the second row who was shaking her head wildly. Um, we'll get a microphone to you if you just stand up and uh, give us your sure. point of view there, Sure. Please. Good evening. I'm from Iraq. Um, well, for your comment, you keep on saying we cannot Arabs always disappoint us, uh, dictators, and so forth and so forth. I don't want to repeat what you said. But sir, when, when are we going to take a step forward and actually trust the Arab leagues? We need to change. You can see too many revolutions are happening in the Arab world. So don't you see that this is some kind of a hope? And us, the youth, we are the, the, next, the next generation's leaders. So. So you want NATO to stay out of Libya? I, of course, I, Arabs should on. never stay out of this. Arabs should be a part of this. We have to Definitely. deal with our own problem, not somebody coming from all the way from, to, from, from uh, past the Pacific and, and solving our problems. No, sir. Oh, Marshall, I, I do you want to answer? Do you want to answer? Uh, absolutely. I agree with you about the revolutions that this is time for change. And this is time for moving towards a uh, serious democratic transition in the Arab world that was really delayed for a while. But g g right now, all the revolutions that happen in the Arab world, uh, the, especially the, the Egyptian and Tunisians, they are not there yet. They did not realize their potential yet. We still are working on it. And uh, ask anyone in the Arab revolutionary movement in Egypt or in Tunisia, they will let you know that. The other thing is that we really did not, this, this became a matter of urgency. Al-Qaddafi managed to turn a civic resistance campaign, an unarmed one, into a fully-fledged armed conflict that he had the upper hand because there was no other way for him to win this. He can win it only by violence. If he goes to elections, he'll go down. If he goes for a referendum, he'll go down. So the only way to stay in power was to massacre his own people. Yeah, yeah, his she, own I, people I, don't, I don't think she's convinced by your answer. answer. I don't think she's convinced at all by your answer. Let, let me just go back to the questioner here, please. Uh, sir, well, as you said over and over again, you have Qatar, UAE, you have too many Arab countries are willing to help more than willing to help. Why do you always have to shut that door down and say, no, Arabs cannot take care of it? As the um, doctor, I, uh, Mr. Paul, I believe, he said, why can't Arabs work with the NATO? Why can't you open that door that we can help up and work together? Why do we always have to, have to say, no, no, Arabs cannot Father do Lamin, that? Let do me, you let me that say point? something. First, when you, people like you, younger people, people who believe in democracy and human rights will be leading these Arab regimes, I will defer to you uh, with, with, I will not call any other intervention. Right now, we are not dealing with that. We are dealing with no. regimes that are uh, ruled by people who are looking for their own interests and their own survival. And we are looking at that. The other thing is, I think mm -hmm. there is a difference between leading and participating. I think right now it's the challenge and that litmus test for the Arab countries to participate. You cannot lead without participating. You cannot walk with, before you okay, crawl. Okay, Paul Salam, you wanted no, to I think the this. timing is key. I mean, we are in a revolutionary moment in the Arab world that comes once in a, in a century or once in a millennium. The Libyan people rose up in response to revolutions in Egypt and Tunisia and other parts of the world. This is the time to act. Uh, and uh, we have let, as the populations, we have let our regimes off the hook if we tell them, no, you're not ready yet to intervene, you don't have to act in support of other people. I think, like my colleague was saying, that we, in these types of debates, demonstrators in other parts of the Arab world, should be pressing their governments. Yes, they're military, yes, the transition has not taken place, but like they press their regimes to get rid of corrupt officials, to get rid of, 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 of intelligence agents, they should push them to help the Libyan people. Yeah. It's a matter of will. Okay, all right. And I'm to say that, no, we can't, we're and that the regimes okay. with billions of dollars cannot do anything in Libya, no, they can't. I'm going to take a question from the lady in the second row. Um, if we can get a microphone to you, would you please stand and tell us where you're from? Suhair uh, Salah, I'm Qatari. If the NATO is to intervene, I ask the opposition and proposition, what are the consequences? Are we likely to witness a colonization of any sort? What is the price Libya is going to pay or the Arabs? Okay, Omar, Thank sure. You. 
There are no boots on the ground. I don't think any yet. Uh, Western boots yet. Well, yet, but the, it was quite obvious among all the Western politicians, all the co coalitions, they, they were pretty much strict about the idea of boots them? on the ground. For now, it is obviously in their interest not to put boots on the ground if, you want to, if they want to stay in power because there are elections and this will damage them for sure. Uh, we have a problem for just maintaining a 24 hours air patrolling of Libya skies because there is not enough air force. So it's not the, the idea of the, 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 an invasion in Libya. I don't think that will happen at any time. So what price, the question was, what price is Libya going to pay for, for this the, NATO uh, intervention? It will probably be very much attentive. Al Qaddafi was a free radical, if you wish. Like he, can, he did not have, that's why the Arabs don't have much tools to pressure him at the, but I think at a, at a later stage, there will be very attentive ears to uh, the Western uh, powers later on. All right, thank you. Mohammed Ali Abdullah. Yeah, I mean, the, the whole idea of uh, if the intervention was led by Arabs, you know, the casualties would be more, the result would be catastrophic, I think would be correct if it was only Arabs, okay? And I think what we're calling for is Arab leadership. And one of the sort of the misnomers that people think is that this is all about airstrikes and all about... You really think NATO zones. would come in this and, is, and, and take part in a force with Arab leadership? I think maybe not NATO, but other Western countries would. And I think if it was... And, and I think the, the, the reason why the UN waited for the Arab League to take a position was to legitimize their decision decisions back home in their own states, as Paul mentioned, because these are election times, and I think beyond that it would have been even more legitimate. All right, thank you. It's a moment for Arab to show that they can lead by participating. It's not, they are not qualified to lead right now. And I am an Arab, and I have no problem with that. I, we have to understand our reality. We are not qualified morally that we are providing that kind of Who level. Who holds the morality Hold stick? Hold on. Hold on. Who holds the and morality we are not, stick? We are not provide because you country, think NATO has the morality stick? No, no, no. <laughs> hold on. Countries who are please, countries, please, countries, please. countries that are oppressing their own people. Mm. I'm not talking about uh, Egypt, and I'm not talking about uh, Tunisia. They are Arab states. So you, you have to talk about these are countries are going through their own transition. They cannot help, and they will. I will not ask anything of them because they are susceptible to possibly a terrorist activity by Gaddafi himself. Okay. So we have to understand the reality of the Arab world as is, not the reality of the Arab world as we like to see it. Okay, I'd like, to, I'd like to hear from somebody from Libya. Can, can anybody who's from Libya, would you raise your hands? Gentleman in the front row. Quick, quick comment from you. Where Hassan do you stand? I mean from uh, Libyan uh, living in London. Uh, I'm having a real problem with this uh, particular debate because in, a, in, in a real terms, I cannot see the Arab world in any way being able to deliver. On the other hand... Do you in, think they should be able to Of deliver? course they should, but there is no way they can do it in a practical terms. And in reality, we have uh, 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 people being killed day by day so the only alternative we have now is to get this NATO thing going on. Now, like somebody has said, the issue, the problem, it lies with the United Nation and with the mechanism that the United Nation has in sorting out issues like these. Okay, I want to take one more from somebody from Libya. Lady in the front row, you're from Libya? Okay, can we give a microphone to you, please? My name is Aisha Leo. I'm from Masrata, Libya. If we had waited for the Arabs to actually, you know, take a stance and do something, I think that um, we would have seen a lot more destruction and a lot more deaths. Would you have trusted an Arab force if they had come into Libya? I, I don't think so. Based on history, I don't think that um, there was an Arab force that was capable of coming in and stopping Gaddafi. Um, like I said, ideally, I wish, you know, I, we could have trusted uh, an Arab to come in and do the job, but realistically, I don't think uh, it was uh, possible. Well, Salam, how do you react to well, that? Well, I mean, I, I understand the hesitation about, you know, trusting the Arab governments, as I, one would not also, I mean, be able to trust other armies and other governments, whether they're in occupying Iraq or other places. But the Arab countries and the Arab people and different uh, officials did take positions. In the, in the Security Council, it was the Lebanese ambassador, a friend of mine, Nawaf Salam, who drafted the first action and got the Security Council working. It was the GCC and the Arab League and others that made the public voice for the intervention and convinced a lot in the Security Council that there is support for this. So that was very important. My, my problem was after doing all of that, they then asked Western taxpayers, Western young boys, to pay their money, risk their lives, to protect our brothers in Libya. I think as we took the lead in tabling the motion, calling for it internationally, there should have been 
a, a, an Arab leadership, Arab participation w through the Security Council. We are all founding members of the United Nations. We're not a separate entity. But to do all of that and then to step aside and say we are simply asking Western Europeans and Americans to spend their money and risk their lives is, to my mind, completely unacceptable. I don't trust the U.S. Army, and I don't trust the French Army, and I don't trust the Italian Prime Minister. Okay, this is you, not wanted, a matter you wanted of that. to come back, please. I agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think... Please stand up. Okay. Um, I, I don't think... I don't think that, you know, the Libyan people trust, necessarily trust them either, but we were not left with an option. I'm going to take some questions for this side of the house, those who are for the motion. Who has a question for this side of the house, for those who are for the motion? Gentleman in the second row, you. Uh, hello, my name is uh, Hussam Al-Ghariani from uh, Benghazi, Libya. Uh, my question is for Mr. Mohammed. Uh, looking at the problems that NATO is actually facing right now in Libya, um, do you think uh, by having an Arab-led uh, uh, military action in Libya, would they do anything better? Um, that's my question. Okay. Yeah. Uh, to answer your question, yes, I think uh, there needs to be more involvement from the Arab countries, uh, especially on the ground. Okay. I'm not talking about ground troops only, but I think mainly on the border, reinforcing the borders. I think with the uh, with the uh, supplying the uh, revolutionary forces also to to defend the civilians. These are some practical steps that could have helped. Now, NATO alone obviously is not able to do enough job, and I think whether you can take NATO out and put any any party in there alone would never be able to fully t handle the situation. So, like we said all along, there needs to be many people involved. The leadership needs to be maintained locally. The closer the proximity is to the problem, the better the leadership will be. And this is the, the position that, uh, that we are trying to okay, defend. Okay, let me just go back to the question. Please, if you would stand up. You're, you're from Benghazi. Yes. Where are you on this issue? Do, would, you, would you trust an Arab force to go in? Do you think an Arab force not is capable leading, of going? Not leading, no. Not, um, um, some, some role, yes, uh, but I don't think uh, they should lead, to, to tell you the truth. Gentlemen in the second row. Hi, I'm from Syria. Do you think now Arab, we Arabs don't have the capabilities? We have, we have the, the capability to participate, which is a good thing. Guys, why are you so upset <laughs> of the fact that we used to not be able to participate at all? Now we are participating. We are going to lead. Well, just hold on until we qualify to no, lead. No, there is no time hold to on. hold on. Hold there is no time to hold on. Let me finish. This is a new era. Let this me, is a new let era. Let me finish. Revolutions happened in you weeks. Know. Okay, all right. Let, let me finish. It's not let, the time. You made your point. Let you me finish. Point. Thank you. Revolutioners, uh, revolutions take time to take roots in the, in the country. First, I just want to say the issue of why are we calling our, our, our brothers because we are brothers. And then this, the West, you know. It's very wrong to dehumanize the West. That's wrong. It, you don't like to be dehumanized. These are, I think it's very, very important to understand that the West or the East, we are all human. It's a human rights issue. Well, I'm going to bring I mean, I fully agree. I mean, that one shouldn't, you know, demonize it, and that not, not at all. And I, I myself thank the West and yes. NATO for yes. intervening, and if others were not willing to do so. But to my mind, it's very clear that we have an interest, we in this region, like other peoples in other regions, have an interest in building a regional order where we take responsibility first for fires that take place in our region. We take the lead as best we can. We offer whatever limited potentials we have. The things that we do not have, we ask our friends in the international community to help us. Uh, this is not what we did. We, we took the lead in asking, and then we played no role in offering what little we have. Because we can't. Even though we know that because our military, we, we can offer way more because, than we did. We you know it. You know we could have offered much more. What we have not we, done so. What could we, we have, have offered decide. much more? Every country in the Arab world like dealing with Why its could own. Why Qatar, Hold this up. tiny nation, is the only because one that can offer Qatar, airplanes? The billions that Qatar are spent does not in have, Egypt does not with have an Western issue. Fund, they could Hold not on. offer anything. Qatar does not have you the know issue. that's not correct. Hold on. Uh, Qatar does not uh, have the issue that that the Saudi Arabian have right now with their own uh, domestically not have That's the problem. The hold on. You're saying not they could have, not do hold it. On. They not could have, do it. Saudi have Arabia issue. has no planes not to have, send. No, no. Egypt has no planes that to send. does not have not the problem true. that the Bahraini is facing. That does have the problem that the Syrians are facing. That does not have the problem that the Egyptians are facing. The These are realities. Okay, we should so ask I'm going to stop, to I'm gonna stop it there because it otherwise you two will argue Sorry. this point forever. Gentlemen up there, you've had your hand up for a very long time. Thank you. Thank you. I thought this will work. Abdurrahman, I'm a Lebanese American. I think the dilemma is that the Arabs have the capacity, but they don't have the political will or the consensus to lead. 
and that was proven. The problem we have with the NATO, they don't have the moral standing, at least from our point of view. What they did in Afghanistan, what they did in Arab, and in, in addition, a lot of them were in bed with Gaddafi just a few weeks ago. I'm going to put a question to both to prove my point. Look at Syria now. Hundreds are killed. Right now, the Arabs are not moving, and the NATO is not moving. The question is, isn't the blood in Syrians as red as the blood of so Libyans? So who would you have moved into Syria? I think Syria. the Arabs. I think Egypt and Turkey lost, failed big time in helping the Libyans. I think Egypt should have taken the role in, in leading, but I'm not saying Egypt alone in addition to the NATO and otherwise, but I think we failed Libya this way as Arabs. Ali Abdali, you and we are Allah. failing Syria right now as hundreds are being killed every day. So why NATO is not doing anything and why the Arab world is not doing anything? And That's I the bit. Yeah, Ali I, com I completely agree with you. I mean, the platform for taking a position and a leadership role in the region was missed in Libya and hope, you know, hopefully it won't be missed in Syria either. But I'm afraid that the signs so far are not positive. Turkey and Egypt specifically, you mentioned these two countries, I think missed a huge opportunity, especially Turkey. And I think here we have to put the, the bigger picture of the Middle East and not just Arab countries to include Turkey. I think Turkey had two issues here. Is that, and one of them has nothing to do with Libya and it's more on the European Union side. They want to pressure themselves and enter the EU on Libyan backs. And this is one of the reasons why we see the position of well, Turkey as it is today. I checked that Turkey is not an Arab country. Turkey, which I said, right? to, I put it in context first. Aside so. from yeah. that, like, what is the ultimate objective really in, in, in Libya? We have a humanitarian crisis. Mm -hmm. It will be resolved. Qaddafi, I think, will be toppled. What do we want after that? We want, do we want to build a stable democracy in Libya or not? Yes. If, the, if there is a stable democracy in Libya, I don't think Saudi Arabia will be able to do it. In no, Libya. but Libyans will do or, it. Or, Libyans are not asking for help to build a stable democracy. Oh, but, but Libyans are asking an, for help to save lives. When you have interventions, as you know, uh, mm -hmm. these cast some influence at a later stage. Yes. And when you have the democratic, free democratic elections, uh, if you're an authoritarian intervener, there is less and less likely that any democratic transition will happen. No, you're changing. You, you cannot change the, the paradigm. The issue was I'm over the no-fly zone. The issue yeah. was there's nobody's it's, talking it's about invasion. It's who, who, who would like to deal with uh, deal Libya. With the, the Arabs or the NATO. As we so far. And I'm saying ending in, as an end he result. If you want a democratic no Libya. We can't, we can't all talk at the same time. something here. We can't all talk at the same time. Very quickly, I think there will be an opportunity for Turkey and the Arab countries because I, the way I've seen this conflict from day one, that will be no-fly zone, will be strategic uh, targeting of strategic interests and, and areas of, of Gaddafi. And there will be some time of the continuous, the situation continue, that will be the need for boots on the ground. And the question and the challenge for the Arab countries, that these, these boots, the, the only places that they have to come from and will be acceptable are from countries in the Arab world. All right, we, we, have time, we have time for one more question. I'm going to go to that lady over there. You've had your hand up for a long time. Yes, you. Um, hello, I'm Rida from Mauritania, and I have a question for Mr. Abdullah and Mr. Salem. Um, you want Arab countries to intervene in Egypt to trans for Egypt, uh, I mean Libya, to transition to democracy, but how can you ask them to do that if they don't have democracy themselves in their own countries or anything near that? My question or recommendation is, can you name the countries you're talking about? The Arab are, is not a whole thing. They're not interconnected themselves, uh, other than Egypt, another Arab country. I think the, the intervention was not to help uh, build a democracy. I think Libyans are capable and more than capable to build their own democracy. The intervention here was clearly, I mentioned in the beginning, the objectives were to save lives, okay, to prevent Gaddafi's military might that is targeting civilians today. That's it. And that, as far as what countries, I think I mentioned with detail, Egypt was capable to do that. I think to a certain extent, Tunisia had a very strategic role to play on the Tunisian border, okay? And I think the, uh, Saudi Arabia is another country that could have done more uh, in, in, uh, in the intervention and taking the lead. Now, does, there, does that mean only them? No, I think there is a role for French, for British, for US, for Spanish, for Sweden, for every single country that did intervene while the Arabs were sitting and watching. And one okay, other thing I, to I mention, just, I, it was a catastrophe. Want to come back. I just yeah. want to come back. Um, you, you mentioned Saudi Arabia, but don't you think Saudi Arabia is afraid 
of the same thing that happened to Libya to happen in some place? Isn't it paradoxical for it to help Libya? Yeah, but that doesn't justify them not acting. I think this is the but thing that won't. the point is the, the paradigm of. It may not justify it, but it may explain it. Yeah, yeah it explains it. Well, that's the reality. It. Yeah. They didn't even offer, they didn't, and, and we're not talking about Saudi Arabia specifically, but in general, the position we are discussing and we are debating is, it's, it's a position. It's a stance that you take, okay? I think even a symbolic position, even a symbolic position, if you don't have the capability, just by voicing it, that in itself has a lot of value and has a lot of resonance. Okay, before we move to the vote, I'm just going to ask each of our panelists for a quick sentence to sum up their position, and then we'll go to the vote. Mohamed Ali Abdullah, one yeah, quick sentence. Quick sentence. I think it's a time for change in the region, and I think that change is, uh, happens at all levels. We are seeing revolutions at a local level. I think it's time to take revolution into a regional level and into our own positions. We have to have okay, our own all revolutions. Right. That's more than a sentence. Paul Salah. We have primary responsibility to take care of our own issues. We've taken the position. We didn't translate it into action. We should do so with leadership and with the cooperation of the international community. Omar Shaw. Well, Libya is already paying uh, a high price for its freedom. Please don't ask it to pay a higher price by waiting for incompetent, conflicted, and reluctant bureaucracies to save it. Father Lama. I think it's, uh, the Arab have uh, the opportunity to participate. I think through participating uh, in this uh, effort, they will be able to lead in the future, and that will be the test, the real test for the, uh, for the Arab world, the Arab countries. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we've come to a point where we're going to vote on the motion. This House believes Arabs, not NATO, should be dealing with Libya. If you'll just take your voting machines, let me explain to you. If you want to vote for the motion, that's the side represented by those on my right, you press button one. If you want to vote against the motion, the side represented by those on my left, it's button two. Whichever button you want to press, please do it now. There's the result. Aha. We have 45% for the motion, 55% against. The motion has been rejected. All it remains for me to do is to thank our distinguished speakers. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you to you, the audience, as well. The Doha debates will be back again in a month's time. Till then, from all of us on the team, have a safe journey home. Good night. Thanks for coming. Good night.